Welcome back to the Pigskin Podcast. I'm Ben Fierce, and this is Jason Feldman. Feldy, I'm back to the Tyrod Taylor jersey, and I see you've got uh, Mr. Chad Greenway. I uh, went out and tried to run 91 yards with the football. You got tired with about you and uh, Donnie Han and Pat Ruff and Guy Limbeck kind of convoying me down the field, and I had to stop at midfield for a water break. So, props to Chad Greenway for uh, making it being 90, able to run making minutes. it 91 yards. Of course, at his anybody, advanced yeah, age. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of like his age now too. Kinda, right? Yeah, I'm kind of like Chad Greenway. I'm kind of old and probably uh, have stuck around a year or so longer than I should have. But every now and then we can do something well. Not quite like Tyrod Taylor with his three touchdown passes oh, this week. Taylor. You're not on the Tyrod bandwagon the, yet. I'm not How can you I'm not, not be on the Tyrod Taylor bandwagon? Probably because you are. You should pick him in our daily fantasy league. Should I should have player. last week. I, I did. I re, he was one of those last minute removal guys that I did at the end of the. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. I absolutely should have done that. Congratulations, Thanks. Feldy, on your big win. Uh, in I like the, taking your money. That was very nice of you. I will say, you know, I know that was that was a good victory. It probably brought your spirits up after being I needed just something. demolished in the high school picks last week. We, I'd like to just skip to that segment of the show. But I would like to just skip that I'm segment sure of the show. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. But let's somebody uh, help me out this week. <laughs> let's. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's Ugh. talk purple real quick. Uh, good week for them. Yeah. I, I thought uh, they took another nice step forward last yeah, week. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was at the game, and it was really fun to watch. Uh, on both sides of the ball, I think specifically the defense just get after the quarterback for a second week in a row, and you could it's easy when you can blitz on every play because that line could was so see, banged up. It, you know, and that's unfortunately I think that's kind of a trend. I don't know what's going to happen when the Vikings actually go up against a good offensive line and a mobile quarterback. Or a quarterback for that, that can move, yeah. Um, because you could see by the middle of the third quarter, I think, especially after the Greenway interception return for the touchdown, that Phillip Rivers was just kind of waving the white flag. He wanted nothing, nothing to do with that game and that defense anymore. It was Eric, maybe after he took that hit to the ribs. and In typical Phillip Rivers yeah. form, that guy yeah. has a temper, and he's got, he's, he does a better job of controlling it than Cutler, but he's got a little that Cutler feel to him Definitely. where he, he, uh, he's got a little baby in him. I he guess. likes to jaw, and he does not like it when he's getting jawed back at And I think Everson Griffin might have gotten his head a little bit there as that score kept Doesn't going. And, when that whole line, and their right. whole line was just right. gone. And know? then they lost uh, Orlando Franklin in the middle of the game, which certainly didn't help either. Right. But I think you could see as that score kept tipping more and more in the Vikings' favor. He wanted no part of that game anymore. But you're right. Uh, it was good to see a good effort from the defensive line. I thought, um, you know, after Xavier Rhodes went out, Trey Waynes came in and played well. That's a good sign. Um, Keenan, uh, Keenan Allen, my lock of the week. Keenan Allen made scored two touchdowns, money, made know? me some money. you got to be happy about that. Um, but it's a uh, different challenge, bigger challenge this week, heading to Denver and Peyton Manning. Way different. And, um, you know, the offensive line there isn't the greatest, but it's Peyton Manning on his home field. Vikings have never beat him, so um, certainly they're going to have to play better than they've played these last two weeks, including the offensive side of the ball. I think we have to see more out of Teddy in the passing game. I don't know. Do you know what's going on with Hillman injury-wise? Is he going to play? I have not heard. Okay. Well, I, they haven't gotten C.J. Anderson going yet this right. year, really, uh, but they obviously have two of the better receivers. And I don't know how – obviously, Demarius Thomas is a great receiver. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders is going to be my – Lock of the week this week. Uh, I really, I really like him uh, a lot this week. It's, it's great. It's two great targets. I don't know how much of it is Peyton Manning and how good those guys are. We we see that with with Aaron Rodgers when guys leave there, they're not that great a receiver. You right. know, they're right. average receivers when they go elsewhere. But when they got a great quarterback throwing you the ball, it certainly helps. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of pressure and blitzes and where they come from. What Mike Zimmer does with this defense, I think. I saw him say earlier this week that you know there's probably not a blitz he can dream up that Peyton Manning hasn't seen in his career, um, but I, I really like what they've done the last couple of weeks with bringing those two linebackers into that, showing that double A gap on just about every play, the double blitz right up the middle. Whether they do it or not, they've been able to do a lot of different things out of that look, and so we'll see if they stick with that this week or if Zimmer comes up with something different for Peyton Manning in that offensive line in Denver. I'd like to say they're not going to blitz nearly as much, but they certainly can't let Peyton sit there. And, yeah, they and, might have to. Yeah. They, they're they gonna might have, have to. to. Unless have to they blitz. can get pressure with the front four. You know, they, they don't have uh, Julius Thomas anymore, so that he doesn't have right. an outlet in that sense to throw the ball to. But I would guess, depending on who's playing running back, that they're going to be heavily involved in the passing game mm -hmm. this week. So 
Uh, that's a thing to watch. It's a big game for the Vikings. I don't, I don't even necessarily need them to win that football game. I need them to be in that football game right. in the fourth quarter. Just if that to, happens, I'll be... Just need to show that they yeah. can play with a good team on, on the road. road. you know. And you talk about... At the, altitude, too. Or, right. right, absolutely. Yeah, it's a different different deal for the Vikings going out there and playing. And you talk about the Denver running backs. I think the Vikings linebackers need to have another big game. Anthony Barr's looked really good the last two weeks. Um, looking like the player we thought maybe he could become. And I think Eric Kendricks, the rookie, took a step forward last week. So we need to see more of that. It's kind of remarkable how everyone has bounced back after such an awful first week. And you mentioned a guy in bar that was like, ooh, yeah. boy, you know, week one, I'm like, this kid didn't get better like I thought he would. And, boy, the last two weeks he's been great. You know, sometimes you don't believe pro athletes and coaches when they talk about putting games behind them. But I really think that's what the Vikings have done with that San Francisco game is literally just wiped it out and, and said, okay, here we go, starting with week two. Let's let's just be the team that we think we can be. Definitely. So let's move on to the Gophers real quick here, too. Uh, they got another win, and we'll just say it's that. <laughs> and everyone keeps tweeting at me. A when, win's a win, yeah, I guess. But is it when I, seven uh, starters yeah. go down during the course of a game? Wow. I don't think a win is a win when you lose seven starters during the course of a game. And, and what do they do this week going into a play a good North, a really good Northwestern defense with if, if they're missing, what, six or seven guys, especially well, those defensive backs. The thing is, you're, I really think that is an absolute mirror team right now. That, that Northwestern team is super banged up. They're missing a couple guys in their secondary too, a couple key guys in their secondary. They're missing their starting left tackle. They're as banged up as the Gophers are. And when you look at these two teams, they're kind of a mirror image on paper as well in the sense that they both played great their first game. You know, Northwestern beat Stanford, a ranked yep. team, and that kind of put Northwestern on the map this year. But then since then, they've had three very close games against three – or excuse me, two of their games. They had a real bad opponent mixed in there. But two of their games against, like, Ball State last week, super close game, you know, against a team they should be able to beat handily. So they're similar to the Gophers in that sense. And they their team starting a freshman quarterback in Thorson. You know, he's nothing flashy. He doesn't do anything amazing, but he kind of – he kind of has a flair for the dramatic. He makes a lot of huge plays uh, at big times. So that'll be the thing. If they can avoid him making big plays, whether it be with his legs or his arm, I think they're going to be in good shape. I think, uh, you know, the injuries make this uh, a toss-up game just mm -hmm. in the sense that yes. I, I don't know which football teams are going to be on the field on, on Saturday morning. You know, you talked with the Vikings about not necessarily needing to see them win this week. Is it the same case with the Gophers, or considering their schedule coming up and the they division have they play in, no, do they have to they win have this game? They have to win this game. I, I, Northwestern is not the 16th best team in the country, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. uh, just hey, Mitch Leidner thinks they both should be ranked. Right. But... Uh, Mitch should focus on him playing yeah. quarterback because he's not doing that real well right now. Uh, another guy that, you know, last week was the, – the coaching staff did a very good job early on calling short passing plays to get Mitch some confidence and get him going. But when he, was, when he had to make the longer passes, they weren't there again. You know, he missed – this was the first time all year, too, when I was at a game. When you're, when you're up top in the press box at that stadium, you can see the plays developing and you yep. see if guys are open. And last week was the first time that receivers were wide open and mm -hmm. he missed them. So I was, I was disappointed in that sense. But, you know, seeing uh, Shannon Brooks emerge last week was a, a big plus. And, and the fact that they've got Rodney Smith and him in the backfield, I think those two guys, you know, could be our new – Maroney and Barber. I mean, I, and I know it's too early to say that when they're both, you know, young kids, freshman kids, but I think those two guys are very special and I think they can be very good for a long time. You know, you mentioned those guys. You've got Craig James, who is also a sophomore, and I think they have, what, three receivers that they're going to count on a lot who are either freshmen or sophomores. How much slack do we have to cut this offense? Do we have to take that into account some, or should we expect these young guys to be picking up the slack and, and playing like veterans right away? Well, with the receivers, I think the reason they haven't been on the field a lot is because of what you're saying. I think Jerry Kill doesn't tolerate guys who don't run who don't run routes properly and don't block well. And we've seen receivers fall out of favor very quickly with him that don't do those things. You know, it's great to have your natural athletic ability and and all the gifts, but if you can't do the little things well, then Jerry Kill's not going to play you. So yeah, I'll give him a little slack, not much, not on that side of the ball. I'd give a, a young kid more slack on the defensive side of the football. But those kids, those young kids, the Huffs and, and uh, Pook, and hopefully he's playing this week, those yeah. kind of guys, uh, man, they've come along so quick. I mean, they, that game one, they improved from first half to second half. So to, to see those kids develop is awesome. I, it's going to be a good game, I think. I think uh, it's a chance – 
the season is going to go one direction or the other after this week. I truly believe right. that. I, th- I think this is a real crossroads game. And I'm sure that's a cliche. but uh, you know. If they don't win this week, the pressure gets amped up just that much more coming back home the following week. No, they're on the road again. They're, oh, they're they got on the road Purdue, again. Purdue, and that, well, if they don't win that game, they're in huge trouble. I mean, that's even a so. bad, 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 bad Purdue team if they can't. That's the thing, you know. If they win this game, you know they can start out two and zero in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. If they lose, you can't predict where they're going to go. Yeah, if they can win this one and be sitting five and one in a couple of weeks, that's you know, that going one. into the heart of their schedule. That's not a bad deal. Definitely. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on to the high school stuff. Uh, Feldy, how did uh, the picks come out last uh, week? I forgot to look. Let's move on to this week's game. No, we got to talk about last week. How? What happened? Uh, I took your money in fantasy football. All right. Keep moving. Fine. You're ahead of me. Bye. With four games. What? What? It was a one okay, let's game. Move on now. Well, one game spread. So you're saying I got all three right that we had different last That's week? That's what I'm saying. Wow. Somebody help me out. Wow. 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 But uh, first game. So I'm better at picking football games than you. But let's let's do. No, we got to do our player of the week first. Oh, player right? of the week. Let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna go a game I was at. I have to go with Josh DeBoer. Uh, I literally watched him in warmups, and I was like, you know, he's there. There was nothing that stood out, but boy, does that kid have some poise. He uh, he made all the throws the coaching staff asked of him, and, and finished with a record-breaking performance. He threw for 396 yards and wow. six touchdowns That's against good. the top-ranked against team the number in the one state. team in the state. Now, Lured learned a lot from that football game. I guarantee. I hope it. so. But uh, I can't let that happen. That again. Un- that underneath route. You know, if you got a high school quarterback who who can throw that pass and and kids that run and catch it, and honestly, I I have not seen a team like that with five legitimate options for him to throw to. He had, he completed I think passes to six different guys, and five of those guys I, I would love to have on my football team as yeah. receivers. He's got two big guys, two fast guys, <clears throat> and then kind of a, a their running back the the Jorgensen kid. They they line up all over mm-hmm. you know he's kind of an h type back he mostly in the backfield but he can catch the ball too so that's uh we're they're gonna be on our games here that we're picking this week and they're, i'm gonna have a hard time not picking them there but. aren't many teams in high school football at any level that have that kind of depth or that you know have that many options to throw the football to that you can count on yep you know and and lured when they had watched that tape they they thought that they really had to just worry about the duffy kid but it turned out these other kids were you know duffy i don't think touched the ball until he caught an 80 yard touchdown pass <laughs> But uh, he hadn't touched the ball yet to that point through a quarter, and uh, they they found out that these other kids can catch the football too well, in a hurry. A, a good lesson for Lourdes heading into some tough games here. Definitely against some teams that can pass too. So um, your not, your yeah, your less is a less important player of the week. <laughs> the Feldman, the Feldman player of the week, and the Fearson player of the week. Yeah. I, <laughs> All right. My apologies. For, you know, somebody help me out this week. Come on, win some games for me. Please. See, now, oh, you, now you got to press. Too. I'm, I'm You're begging. In big trouble. I'm begging You're in big trouble. Press. I'm going down to Rushford. Uh, this guy's a pretty good athlete. Have you heard of him before? Noah Carlson? I may have heard the, the name. The name's been around a time or two. Maybe he plays a little basketball. He does a lot of things does, well, doesn't he? Does a little jumping in the spring. Um, the Rushford Peterson running back, 6'2, 170 pound junior. That's what he's listed at on the roster. Had a really nice game last week in a 27 14 win over Southland. Carried the ball 21 times for 266 yards and three touchdowns. Took the ball to the house, 80 yards on the first play from scrimmage. It's a good start to a game, um, and RP needed a win to bounce back. Uh, yeah, it's not like Southland's a terrible football no, team. No, Southland's you know, a good that's... football team, and, and RP's 3-3 three and three now, and, and I believe all three of their losses came against teams who were ranked at the time, Blooming Prairie, Fillmore Central in the first two weeks, and then Lewis and Altura two weeks ago. Uh, but they won last week against Southland. Noah had a big game, as I said, 266 yards rushing, touchdowns of 80 yards and 70 yards. He had three scores total. Uh, state triple jump champion, state long jump champion, finished fifth in the 200 meters at the state meet last year. So he's a little bit of an athlete. He's yeah, pretty he's, good. He's all right. He's decent. He's all right. Once again, a bunch of great performances from the yeah, other couple. Lots to pick from. Like we say, we could pick a Stewartville kid every week. Absolutely. And there were a couple again last week that were, were dominant. But uh, let's get to the picks this week. Uh, Feldy, we're going to start with the big schools. East at Winona. East is four and two, you know, and easily could be five and a one. You know, they lost a one point game, and then their only big convincing loss was to West, who very understandable. Mm-hmm. But uh, Winona having a, an incredible season, and, and uh, they're going to be a, a dangerous team when that four A 
playoffs start. Yeah. yeah, we're six weeks into the season. I think it's time to stop doubting Winona and just realize that that's a pretty good football team over there this year. Now watch you just go, and by that, I'm saying I'm picking East. <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to do, right? No. Okay. No. Well, uh, you're up first. I, go ahead. I just said Winona? it's time to stop doubting Winona. Right. I'm taking the Winhawks 26-12. I think they go 7-0 and into the last week of the regular season. And like you said, they're going to give everybody in that section a run. And, and, you know, if they can control the ball and keep the ball on the ground and keep it away from Stewartville, assuming those two teams make it to the section final, can't put them there quite yet. But if that matchup happens to come, that's that's one that I would really like to see myself. I was going to say, that's a section that we kind of would have written off for right. many years. And now right. all of a sudden with Red Wing and those teams, yeah. that, that's a, an, a And I think we kind of uh, scratched our heads at the beginning of the year when Winona and Red Wing started beating everybody. And now we come to realize that maybe some of those teams they beat are actually good football teams losing to Winona and Red Wing, who are very good football teams. Yeah. So I'm going to take the Winhawks 26-12 to 12 this week. I am also going to take the Winhawks 21-20, to 20, another one-point loss Close for East. Game. East isn't a bad football team either. No. But uh, i got to go with Winona, especially at home. I'm going to go with the Winhawks. Yep. Uh, also with the big schools, JM at Mayo. i got to pick first. You're up, you're up first this week. Man. This is a tough one. I, I like Sparty. You can, fl- you can flip a coin on this one. I seriously. like Sparty a lot. You know, you got – you know, Greg Henry is. You told me he's a good football player. I've he's heard. He's okay. Yeah, I've heard he's a decent, yeah, he's decent okay. player. But jam, so many athletes right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're if stacked Mayo, up front. Their yeah, lines are really good. If Mayo can find a way to make that team throw the football, then Mayo can win. Right. However, if they don't, jam, there's so many different weapons that they, you know, they can give the ball to four mm-hmm. or five kids that yep. that can that can make a big play. So. At Mayo on the turf, oh, I want to pick Sparty, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go with the school that's like four blocks from my house. I'm gonna go with the Rockets. You know, there's no way this game isn't close. Right. These two teams meet; it's just not possible. Yep. I'm gonna go with Jam 18 to 14 so over you, your Spartans. It's not a bad pick. Last year the game was decided by one point. Jam scored late. Um, you know, Mayo has won. I looked this up, and this surprises me. They've won seven of the last nine meetings in this series. Not tonight. <laughs> we need that little guy in here to give the Herb Brooks speech. Maybe he could go in the jam. Oh, so you think I was imitating the little guy, not Herb Brooks himself? Yeah, the little guy almost Tell delivers me. a speech better than Herb does. Um, but I only picked jam because I knew you were taking. Got to get a game back here. Um, Mayo. They've been up and down the last couple of weeks. I mean, they lost by three touchdowns to Oatana last week, but the game felt closer than that. Oatana scored late. They scored on a couple of big plays. That's been the problem with Mayo this year, though. You talked about if you know JM has so many different guys who can run the ball. Mayo has been very susceptible to giving up that big play. That said, um, I heard Donnie Holcomb, the Mayo coach, deliver a speech last week unlike I've heard him deliver after a football game before. He was not happy, um, but he let his team know that he was not happy but that if they correct things, they can be a very good football team. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt this week at home in a rivalry game, I'm trying to keep the Addington jug at Mayo. I'm going to take the Spartans 27-24. to 24. All right. I figured you would. Yeah. But I would not be shocked if it goes the other way. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we could be surprised by anything that happens can in that game. Uh, we're going to go a little bit smaller schools here. Lewiston, Altura, 6-0 and at Goodhue, 5-1. and A couple of ranked teams. Uh, that's going to be a good one. It's kind of offense versus defense on that one. You know, Goodhue has played some good defense this year, and L.A. has put up a lot of points this year. So, uh, I, you know, is it my pick? For, it's your you're, pick first. You're up, uh, my pick first. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm all aboard the Cardinals bandwagon, but I think Goodhue keeps it close, 31-26. I usually don't pick against Goodhue. But I, I, like I got to do it. I got to do it this week. I'm going to go Lewis and Altura 28, Goodhue 6. That's I, two ranked teams, by the way. It is. It is. I just think Lewiston offensively is the real deal. I agree. Uh, so I'm gonna I think go, they can make some noise in the postseason. Yeah, too. I'll go with Lewiston 28-6. Uh, yeah, that's no knock on Goodhue there, I don't think, from either of us. That's just – I think Lewiston is just a tremendous football team yeah. this year. No, Lewiston, Altura. Sorry, Altura. Byron at La Crescent. Uh, La Crescent, even <laughs> though they lost last week, has to be energized by, yeah. by that football game. Uh I'm going to pick La Crescent with Byron going on the road. If it was at Byron, I'd probably go the other way. But uh, the Bears play decent defense. I don't know that they have the horses to stop that La Crescent passing game when they line up with four receivers on every single play. I'm going to go with La Crescent 
35, Byron 28. I agree with you. I had almost the same score written down. I think LaCrescent wins, and like you said, that offense, just the way they played against Lourdes last week, they showed that they they can be dangerous against anybody. So I'm going to take the Lancers 40 to 27. And moving right along, Lourdes at Plainview, Elgin, Millville. Now I know PEM is incredibly motivated. You think they've, they've been waiting for this one for a while? They've had this game circled on their calendar quite a while. Uh, Plainview's 4-2, you know, they're still a really good football team. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, one of the best backs in the area, Chase Raymond. Uh, but Lourdes has a, a guy by the name of Mason Carson. Is he know. pretty he's, good? He's, he's a is decent he right? football player. Is this me or you first? Um, I forget. Good question. I don't remember. Me? All right, then I, then I got to go. Thank uh, goodness we have Andy back. I know. I, gotta, I have to take the Eagles. Yeah, you know, that's, you that's my squad. Uh, I think they come out and play their best game of the year. I'm going to say they win 42 to 21. Wow. Okay. I think every time I pick PEM this year, they've been coming off a good game and have kind of faltered. So my apologies in advance to PEM. I got to get some games back on Fiercy. So I'm on your bandwagon this week, Bulldogs. This will be a big, big upset, won't it? Whoa. If it happens. Wow. Yeah. So no Chase Raymond running no. for like 400 yards. No. Or I'm going to take PEM 21 to 20. I think they win a close one. Nice. Cannon Falls at Cass and Manorville, two, two and four teams. Two teams I think are way better than their record. I agree with that. Uh, Felder, you're up first. Yeah, like you said, two teams that are better than their record. I can't figure out the KM team, quite honestly. Um, so I, I'm gonna, even though they're on the road, I'm gonna take the Bombers. I think it's another close one. Lots of close games this week. Uh, I'm gonna take Cannon Falls, 25 to 22. Went out with a field goal at the end. Nobody <laughs> comes into cast and pushes these comments around. Maybe so. I think they're starting to figure it out. I think they're starting to learn that new offense. Uh, I picked them last week and it paid off for me. So I'm gonna go with the comments again this week. I'm going to go with them winning 24 to 14. Excellent. Last one. You're up first. Uh, ZM at St. Charles. ZM's 1 and 5. St. Charles is 0 and 6. I got the Saints getting off the schneid yeah, this week. Look at that. I think they're going to figure they're, they're hopefully getting a little more, more healthy. I know they were very banged up. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, the Saints looked a little better last week, and I think they're going to they're gonna finally get a win at home. Uh, it'll be a close one. We'll go 31 to 26. I'm going back with the road team again. We've got four different this Yeah, we're going right? to we're going to either make up some ground or I'm I'm going to hand we this thing. We could be tied. I'm going to hand this thing over to you maybe. We'll be up by week. a thousand. But I have uh, ZM 26 to 19 written down. So Cougars, help me out a little bit. I beat him. Don't like him. He didn't pick you. Help me out. <laughs> I'm begging should, at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But anyway, that's about it for us this week. Let's wrap it up. Uh, yeah. And uh, he's giving us the sign. Yeah, he's like we it. talk too much again. He's been doing that for yeah. like 10 minutes, yeah. but, you know, whatever. Uh, thanks for watching again this week. Uh, we'll be back again next week, Thursday. We're, uh, we're almost to playoff almost time for there. high school football. Oh, it's the best time of the year. It doesn't feel like it should be playoff time. You know what, though? Outside tonight. Now it does. It was yes, nice. It, has and it up felt until this like week. fall football weather tonight. So I'm, I'm excited Maybe for Maybe get the stocking cap out this week. Might have Maybe. to. Maybe. Might have to. Might have to. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week.